This is Dr. Marty Harris, and today's topic will continue Foundations of IDD, Prevalence, Causes, Identification and Assessment, and Issues and Trends. Prevalence of IDD. First, stop and picture in your mind the bell curve. Remember that IDD is on the far left end of the bell curve and represents a small percentage of the total population. Out of the whole school population, approximately 10% of the school population have disabilities. And out of that 10%, just a little over 1% have IDD. This circle represents the 6 million students with disabilities ages 6 to 21 years. It shows that about 10% of these students have IDD. Now look at the smaller circle, which represents all the students with IDD. Out of that group, 90% have mild to moderate IDD, and only about 10% have severe or profound IDD. When we look at the whole population, adults, adolescents, children, preschoolers, toddlers, and infants, the general population has between 1 and 3% IDD. As you can see, there are some inconsistencies in the prevalence reports. We do know there are more males than females. We do know that there is an overrepresentation of African Americans, Hispanic Americans, and Native Americans in the IDD category. Causes of IDD. Before we talk about causes, we should stop and think about contributing factors, poverty, malnutrition, inadequate health care, living in homes or areas with pollution. Three main causes are biological, environmental, and unknown prenatal influences. One example of chromosomal abnormalities is Down syndrome. We know that fetal alcohol syndrome causes IDD. It would fall under environmental causes. The two that are listed as unknown prenatal influences have to do with the brain. Hydrocephaly means water on the brain, which is the excess spinal fluid not draining properly from the brain area to the spine Years ago, these children developed huge heads and skulls and were severely disabled. Nowadays, the cure is a shunt. With this early medical procedure, these children develop typically. Anencephaly has to do with small skulls and the inability of the bones to expand as the child's brain grows. This serious problem is addressed with surgery to allow the skull to expand. Often these children will wear a helmet to protect their brain, and then they develop quite typically. Here is a list of more environmental factors that can cause IDD. Some of them I can't even pronounce, but many of them you are familiar with. Rubella, German measles in other words, radiation, malnutrition, how old the mother is. Very young mothers and older mothers can have a higher incidence of children with mental retardation or IDD. Blood type incompatibility. This is why we should have prenatal care. Here's a list of more environmental factors that can cause IDD. Some of them I can't even pronounce, 
but many of them you are familiar with. Rubella, German measles in other words, radiation, malnutrition. How old the mother is. Very young mothers and older mothers can have a higher incidence of children with mental retardation or IDD. Blood type incompatibility. This is why we should have prenatal care. For years we have known about the dangers of drug and substance abuse to babies in the womb. This virus is also very dangerous to pregnant women. It can be transferred through diaper changing, which is one of the reasons preschools, toddler, and infant care facilities use gloves while changing diapers. This virus is also carried by those little green turtles we used to give the children as pets. And one more breeding area for this virus is the cat litter box. So pregnant moms get to tell dad to take care of that chore. Here is a list of more genetic and chromosomal causes of IDD. Let me tell you about just a couple of these. P K U. P K U stands for Fetacatenoria. It is an inherited metabolical disease that can cause severe IDD. What happens is the infant cannot metabolize milk and the body turns milk into a toxin that attacks the brain. Nowadays this is easily addressed with early blood testing. Then the baby is put on a different type of formula. Tay-Sachs disease is a progressive nervous system disorder that causes profound IDD, deafness, blindness, paralysis, and seizures. Caused by a recessive gene, this disorder is found in specific Jewish clans and Irish clans. It is usually fatal by the age of five. Fragile X syndrome is a chromosomal abnormality that affects more boys than girls and can cause mild to moderate IDD. Rett syndrome is a regressive disorder found in girls and is part of the autism spectrum disorders. The early signs are loss of purposeful hand movements slowed brain and head growth, and gait abnormalities, seizures, as well as IDD. prader willi syndrome, and it is pronounced prod, like you're prodding with a pitchfork. prader willi syndrome is linked to a chromosomal abnormality that is characterized by delays in motor development and insatiable appetite, as well as IDD. In fact, some of these children, we have to lock up all of their food and carefully monitor what they eat because they want to eat constantly. Preventative measures, you know these as well as I do vaccines, improved prenatal care, early diagnosis and treatment, public education about drugs and alcohol, and genetic counseling. Let's talk about identification and assessment of students with IDD. The assessment focus includes intellectual functioning, in other words, IQ tests academic achievement levels. A lot of focus is done on the adaptive behavior skills and their communication skills. Then we're going to take a close look at what kind of related services are needed, transition planning, and the levels of support needed. Here are 
the names of some assessment instruments that are commonly used, the AAMR, Adaptive Behavioral Scale, the Vineland, the Scales of Independent Behavior, and Functional Behavioral Assessment. This is the one, FBA, this is the one that gives us teaching information and direction for the levels of support, issues and trends in the field of IDD. Well, appropriate treatment of individuals with IDD continues to be a problem in our society and in other societies. Individuals with IDD and the death penalty is quite controversial. The Supreme Court has ruled that you cannot put a person with mental retardation to death. So the question becomes, when is that person diagnosed as having IDD? Before the crime? After the crime? It's highly controversial. And abuse and neglect continues to be a great issue. It not only causes disabilities, but these children are more vulnerable to abuse and they are more likely to pass it on to the next generation. Remember the essay I read to you called Welcome to Holland by Emily Pearl Kingsley? Well, here's the rest of the story. Here's Jason. He's on Sesame Street. Perhaps his mom wrote him in the screenplay. Jason grew up in a loving family, and his best friend is Mitchell, who also has Down syndrome. Best buddies grew to adulthood, and they wrote a book. It's called Count Us In. Growing Up with Down Syndrome. The guys worked and lived in New York and would meet their moms for lunch once a month to discuss specific topics. Their conversations turned into a delightful testimony of love, families, and friendship. One time, my mom was visiting my house and I gave her this book to read. She devoured it with great enthusiasm. When she closed the book, she said, It's so nice. They really get to have a life nowadays. Yes, a life with work and friends and hobbies and full citizenship. Remember, education should be special because it works. Thanks for listening.